who doesn't love bananas? I thought so. So today, I'll show you how to make a delicious homemade banana liqueur that's slow waste, easy to make and cheap. What's not to love? I'll compare it to a store-bought version and show you the ingredients and the whole process, from peel to bottle. I'll share banana-based cocktail recipes in a future episode, so make sure you're subscribed and share this video with a friend of cocktails while you're at it. Tiki cocktails, fun twists on the classics or even chilled on the rocks. You'll be having a good time when it's banana liqueur time. There are quite a few store-bought options when it comes to banana liqueurs or creme de banana, Bose, Monin, the Kuiper, Tempest Fugit or the one we have here today, Gifart. So let's put our DIY version to the test and try them side by side. Gifart has a lighter color with our DIY version being a bit more on the caramel side than the amber gold of Gifart's. As for the aroma, Gifart's has a light candy-like banana smell with more of the same on the palate, sweet candy-like banana with subtle acidity reminiscent of kiwi. Our DIY version has a rich, ripe banana aroma. On the palate, it has a great, rich and ripe banana funk. It's quite sweet, but it pairs well with the tropical profile of the liqueur. A wonderful banana liqueur for whenever you need a bit of fun, tropical flavors. We made quite a few liqueurs in cocktail time by now, but I'm really very proud of this one. Let me know in the comments if you'll get around to making it for yourself. If you will, you'll need a certain unique ingredient, something we haven't used on the channel before. Amylase. So what is it? Amylase is an enzyme that breaks down starches into fermentable sugars, helping us strain out banana juice. Fun fact is that amylase is found naturally in human saliva, and in various plants, fungi and bacteria. I'll show you a very short clip of how they use human saliva to create a special drink of the Amazon jungle, called chicha, by chewing and spitting out cassava, helping it start to ferment. If you have a light stomach, viewer discretion is advised. Ooh. You've been warned. Luckily, I got a small amount of this involved in a specialty store for wine producers, where I usually go to buy acids or enzymes for specialty recipes. I couldn't find it on Amazon for you, but I'll provide some non affiliate links in the description. Now, let's make some DIY banana liqueur. Here are all ingredients that we'll need for the liqueur ripe bananas, which you need to make sure have an edible peel, water, sugar, high proof grain alcohol, an aged rum, amylase, pectinex, and ascorbic acid for vitamin C. Start by peeling the bananas and placing them in the blender. We need 750 grams of peeled bananas. And don't throw away the peels, we'll still need them. Now let's add the things we need in the blender, starting with 190 grams of water. To that I'll add 15 grams of amylase, which will break down the starch and make it easier to turn our mixture into a liquid. Next, 2.5 grams of pectinex, which will break down the pectin, giving us a clearer result. Lastly, 0.75 grams of ascorbic acid, commonly known as vitamin C, to slow down the oxidation. If you don't have this, you can swap 100 grams of water with lemon juice. Blend this to get it into a nice homogeneous puree without any lumps or chunks. If you need a good blender to achieve this for a reasonable price, I'll link the one I'm using down in the description. Now pour this into a big jar or another sealable container and leave it to sit for at least 12 hours. I'll place it in the fridge, because I don't want this to start fermenting. Now let's get back to the pills and make some banana oleosaccharum. You'll need another container you can close airtight. Add the pills and weigh them as you're doing so. We'll add the equal weight of sugar, which will pull the oils and bunch of flavors from the banana pills, dissolving the sugar in the process and giving us a delicious flavored syrup. Give it a nice model to help it along. Close the container and place it on the shelf to do its thing in the next 24 hours. For the best result, stir it a few times in that time span. After 12 hours, I'm back with our banana puree, which I'll strain through a cloth filter. This will take some time, and if you don't have a big sieve like this, just do it on a few goes. And as this is filtering, I'll place this back in the fridge, since our studio is a pretty good environment for fermentation, as you could see in the fermented grapefruit sodas episode. In our production schedule, 24 hours has passed since we started with our oleosaccharum, so let's strain this as well. This time using just a fine mass strainer, we'll need this in the next steps. With our banana juice now strained, I'll first measure out exactly how much we ended up with, so I'll add the right amount of sweetness and alcohol. A potato ricer will get out a few extra milliliters. I'm aiming for 25% ABV, or 50 proof liqueur with 200 grams of sugar per liter. And while that's a bit sweeter than what I usually make, this also means more banana flavor, so it's a good trade-off. 
I ended up with 660 ml of banana juice. And by using the cocktail calculators on KevinCross.com, I see that I have to add 148.5 ml of our banana oleo saccharum. That's 22.5 ml for every 100 ml of banana juice. This will now be at a sweetness level of 25 bricks. Of course, there's some variation in the sweetness of bananas. So if you want to be completely precise, you can do this part using a refractometer. And don't throw away the banana oil sacrum. You can make my Iraq punch or the banana knock with it. Now let's bring the ABV level up. For every 100 ml of our banana juice and oil mixture, we need 33.5 ml of neutral grain spirit at 96% ABV and 3.5 ml of H rum with 40% ABV, so 270 ml and 28 ml. Like I mentioned before, it's easier with the free calculators you can use on my website for almost all liqueurs we've done on cocktail time. Rum and banana pair really well, but you could also go with cognac, which is what Jeffarts uses in their banana liqueur. Mix both into the banana mixture and stir it in, or let the magnetic stirrer do it for you. The liqueur will get a bit darker, and become a little less clear, which is perfectly fine. Bottle it, add a label, and leave it to sit for a few days. Then you can filter out some of the sediments if you wish. Here's what it will look like once it's strained. As with all DIY liqueurs, it will continue to develop its flavor and mellow out for another week or two. So patience is key. You can store it at room temperature and I suggest you use it within a year. Once you do, you'll probably want to make a new one. You'll find all DIY liqueurs in this neat playlist. So enjoy mixing and I'll see you soon with a list of banana cocktails. Cheers, friends of cocktails.